I was asked a question the other day, and it went like this. I filed for divorce three weeks ago. I left him in the house, and over the course of a week, his emails became more and more contrite. He's now going to a recovery group because he had issues with pot. He's going to church. He's looking for a job. He's talking about going to counseling and doing everything I begged him to do for years. He's crying a lot and treating me with respect where before he would yell at me and swear at me when I asked for change. I'm very confused. I don't know if I can trust these changes. Do you have any experience with hijackles and responses to consequences like this? Well, I was so glad to get this question because this is a very typical thing. When you are with a hijackal, a relentlessly difficult person, and if you're not sure if you're with a hijackal, remember to get my free ebook, How to Spot a Hijackal, at hijackals.com, H I J A C K A L S.com. So if you're with a hijackal, they will do this as soon as they can't have power over you, as soon as they truly believe that you will leave them, then they can't force you to stay. They don't go the route of saying, how dare you do this to me and all the things that hijackals like to do to have power over you. They will go back to the origins of your relationship. Remember that time when you met the hijackal? The hijackal just was so charming, so interested in you, so willing to do what pleased you, so wanting to know what would make you happy. We call that stage love bombing. They are being a chameleon, which all hijackals are, and so they make themselves into what they think you most want. And they do that very, very well. And so in this love bombing stage, they will simply appeal to every single part of you, and you will believe that you have met your soulmate. And it's a wonderful time, and it's what really hooks you into being with a hijackal. And when you've had that memory of that love bombing, then a hijackal will hope that you remember that. And that's the idea, to give you this initial impression that they are the most wonderful person you have ever met, and that you would never do anything that could displease them, and they would never do anything that would harm you. And they like to kind of seal that in. And I say, hijackals hook you on hope. Because from the time you have been captured by a hijackal, they then will begin to deteriorate in their behavior. And they will look for ways to have power over you. They will look for ways to make you wrong. You may have noticed that about hijackals. They love to make you wrong. They love to have an opportunity to find a fault with you. And they find those opportunities way too frequently. And because you are hooked on hijackal hope, you keep thinking, oh, if I just do a little bit better. Maybe I'm more loving. Maybe I'm more compassionate. Maybe I'm more understanding. Maybe I'm more patient. Maybe I'm less demanding. Oh, and you turn yourself into a pretzel and it's never enough. It is never enough. And you keep thinking it's you and they keep telling you that it's you. And it goes on and on and on. And when you seem to be getting a little too fed up, then they go back a bit to the love bombing just again. And then again, there you are in this cycle. Now, this is really a cycle of abuse. It's actually what I've spoken about in other episodes. It actually creates what we call trauma bonding, that you get into this cycle of hope and despair and hope and despair and hope and despair and hope keeps winning. And then the hijackal has you hooked. So when this person says, okay, I filed for divorce. 
I made a very strong statement that this was not okay with me at all. The hijackal got very, very concerned. And so what did he do? In this case, it was a he. And what he did was, as she said, now he's going to a recovery group because he had an issue with pot. He's going to church. He's looking for a job. He's talking about counseling and doing everything I begged him to do for years. Doesn't that sound like love bombing? I'm going to be the perfect person you wanted. I am going to hook you on that hope again. I am going to engage you in the possibility that I am who I told you I was in the beginning, or at least who I showed you that I could be. And I am going to do that until I get you again. And then the cycle will repeat. So this this person from my Facebook group who sent this in, also said he's crying a lot. Okay, one thing we need to know about hijackals, so many of them can cry on demand because certain kinds of hijackals go with a victim stance. They may not be the overt yelling power over kind, but the power that they want is the poor me. They say, oh, you're, you're so awful to me. I feel so badly. You don't love me. And they go for a victim stance. And don't be fooled because those covert narcissists, as we call them, are covert hijackals. Um, and not all hijackals are, are narcissists. Hijackals are all of the different personality disorders. Um, but Covert means that they're not going to be that person who explodes and does all the things that overt hijackals do. They're going to go with the poor me approach. They're going to go with the I can never be good enough. They will turn on the waterworks. They will go into deep depression. And don't miss these signs and symptoms because that's that's just part of what they're up to. And you need to be aware of that. So then she went on to say that now he's treating me with respect where before he would yell at me and swear at me. Okay, now you're asking yourself, which is true? Is he the guy who treats me with respect or is he the guy who yells and swears at me? Of course you're confused. Of course you don't know if you can trust these changes. And it would be lovely for me to be able to say, oh yes, the corner has been turned. But I can't in all good faith say that to you because of this cycle of trauma bonding, which means that what he is doing if you look at his previous behaviors, you'll probably see the cycle. There have been places where when you got really angry, he got contrite. Or when you threatened to leave, he toned down his demands. But that's the cycle. So I would love to be able to say you can trust those changes. But until I personally would work with you and your partner, <laughs> I don't know that answer because hijackals are very, very crafty and they have, they're not doing this on purpose. I mean, there's a small percentage of them that do this on purpose, but they're doing it because this is the only way they know to survive. Most hijackals live in a great deal of fear and what they're putting on is an incredibly show of, uh, an incredible show of bravado that they're appearing to be so self self confident so assured so in charge so large you know they're the, but inside they're not that and so i don't really know that if you can trust these changes but in most cases the answer is no you can't and i would advise you not to if you already feel that you want a divorce and he cannot stand the idea that he doesn't have more supply waiting, somebody else to take your place. He's going to want to get you back. He will say to you is go to counseling. Come to someone like me who actually understands all the tricks of the trade of hijackals. And let's find out if that's what's really going on. Let's find out if you can actually believe him. I wish you well with this. Go to my website, hijackles.com, or for relationship help for more information. And you can submit your question there too. Talk soon.